My name is uh, Sascha. I'm an architect uh, from the Ruhr area, working for uh, Landscape Architecture Office uh, Planer Gruppe Oberhausen, uh, which is based in uh, the Ruhr area since 1973. Um, at first I want to say thank you for the invitation. It's a great honor for us as an office to talk about our uh, project Zollverein Park in this context. Um, unfortunately, I could not hear in the could not be here in the morning uh, to follow the other lectures. But as far as I learned, the main topics are about energy change and transformation. And those words sound like uh, the key words of life for someone living and working in the rural area. Um, my contribution uh, consists of three parts. I want to start with some facts and figures about the rural area before I come to the Zollverein, to Zollverein as an urban environment, as a part of that area, and then end with the actual topic, our project, the Zollverein Park. Okay, so the rural area. With the following sheets, I want to give you an overview of the impact that coal mining, and I'm only talking about uh, coal mining, not all the other industries that were in connected to that, had in this former agricultural landscape. On this map, we see coal mines in the rural area between 1400, and that are some very small facilities here in the south. Um, where the coal was found very close to the ground and to the surface and was recovered just by hand. And 2018, when the last coal mine in the, in the rural area has been closed, so last year. Actually, mining moved from south to north over the centuries as it became technically possible um, in the course of industrialization to dig for it deeper and deeper. The red circle you see here um, uh, it shows the location of the Zollverein coal mine, where the mining started in 1847, and whose shaft 12 <coughs> reaches more than 1,000 meters in depth. When I moved to that area <coughs> more than 20 years ago to study architecture, there were still more than 50,000 people working in, in coal mining. We see that there on the right. Um, and producing more than 30 million tons of coal per year. Although 50 years earlier there were 450,000 uh, employees uh, at the peak of the production in uh, coal mining, that 50,000 were still far more than back in 1847, you see here, when the mining at Zollverein started. Well, what influence did such a heavy industrial activity have on the landscape? One very striking change, of course, are the slag heaps that change topography drastically. Here we see a map of slag heaps with heights between less than 10 meters to more than 125 meters. Today, a lot of that slag heaps are transformed to landmarks, touristic hotspots, parks for recreation, um, and home for land art. But landscape changed and still changes into the other direction as well. This map shows areas harmed by lowering, more from, from 2 meters to more than 20 meters as the result of, of mining. And here we see what this today still means in some areas. Another significant intervention is what happened with the river Emscher in the north of the Ruhr area and her tributaries during the past 120 years. Until the end of the 19th century, the Emscher has been not very big and because of its low gradient, slowly meandering river. But as industrialization took place already 50 years, the Emscher and her tributaries were used as an open sewer to take the industrial slop to the river Rhine. But as you can imagine, not only in times of a flood, all this slop became a problem. Around 
1920, the formerly natural system of rivers was changed into an engineered construction of an open sewer. That was necessary because of the lowering activities, which made it impossible to build an underground sewer and to keep it working. Since the end of the 20th century, so in, since most lowering activities are more or less uh, have come to an end, the Emscher Genossenschaft, which is an organization responsible for the Emscher system, is working on an underground sewer and renaturing the Emscher intertributaries, which you see on the right. And this huge project, of course, is accompanied by, we already know that from the slag heaps, art. And this issue leads to the fact that today, when you search the internet or Google the words like uh, slag heaps, rural area, or Emscha, you do not find pictures of injured landscapes or an ecologically dead river, but you find pictures of artworks and lovely, beautiful landscapes. <coughs> Another point is, demoli <coughs> is demolition. Of course, today not all of those hundreds of coal mining facilities, coking plants, steel factories and so on are still remaining. In fact, the remains are only a fraction. And that, of course, is another serious part of the enormous transformation in the landscape as an urban environment. And perhaps this is one explanation for the pride and closeness that a lot of people in the area today have for those well-known remains like Zollverein, or Duisburg Nord, or uh, Kokerei Hansa, or others. On the, other hand, I, on the other hand, I don't want to hide that a lot of other people, mainly those who really worked in or lived right by those machineries, were somehow happy with the demolition and do not understand why those times today are glorified and glamorized. Because those were also places of really hard work, of pollution, illness, short lives and in the end of decline. One last thing is about eternity. Another leftover of the era of coal mining is the fact that as long as people want to live in that area, people will have to pump. Rainwater that fills up the pits and rises has to be stopped from reaching the drinking water in order to not pollute it. And therefore, it has to be pumped into the rivers. If we stop to pump the rising water, if we stop to pump, the rising water will not only pollute the drinking water, but also flood most of the land because of the lowering. All this was meant to be a short uh, introduction into the rural area as an energy landscape of the past and about the results we have to deal with today. This landscape, as we can experience today, was designed less by urban planners or landscape architects but more by industrial needs and economical needs and utilizations. And without rating this, it maybe helps to understand what happened um, at Zollverein and what are our intentions in designing and implementing the Zollverein Park. To get into Zollverein, I want to read out some quotes. They, come, they all come from a book called Zollverein World Heritage and Future Workshop. It came out last year, published by Hermann Maat. He at that time was the CEO of the Foundation Solverein for 10 years and gave the keys together with this book over to his successor. So, Solverein World Heritage Site is a place of change and a place of progress that is evolving dynamically. That says Professor Dr. Hans-Peter Neul. He was member of the board of the Zollverein Foundation and uh, then successor of Hermann Mott. Zollverein in its over 150 years of history was always shaped and was always shaped through change and transformation. That was uh, said by Professor Christoph Meckler, architect for the, con for the conversion of the former washhouse at Zollverein in the year 2000. The UNESCO World Heritage Site Zollverein is a radiant landmark of the unique change that the rural area and its people have lived through and helped to shape. 
says Armin Laschet, who is Prime Minister of North Rhine-Westphalia. The Zollverein buildings cannot endure as shut down monuments of the past. Their structural substance does not allow that. It simply decays. That was said by Heinrich Böll, Hans Kabel and Achim Pfeiffer, who are the responsible, responsible architects for the refurbishment and conversion of almost all the buildings of the Zollverein mine site from the 1980s until today. And the intent of the OMA master plan is to place the old industrial complex in a new and surprising context, complex, in a new and surprising context, through carefully selected interventions and interpretations. That was said in the master plan, um, the master plan Zollverein by the Office for Metropolitan Architecture in 2002. Another one, Zollverein is a location with a great past and a prosperous future, whose historical name directly refers to economic development and social change. Said by Professor Dr. Oliver Scheidt, the former managing director of the Ruhr 2010 European Cultural Capital. And finally, Zollverein shows that the topics monument and future can live together well said Hans-Jürgen Best, the city director of the city of Essen. What I want to say is that when I talk about the constant transformation of Zollverein Park, this idea is not, this idea of change and transformation is not an idea that we as the landscape architects for the park design have exclusively. On the contrary, it is kind of a general agreement that Zollverein with his exemplary position for the whole region is in a constant state of change and transformation. Here we have an aerial view of the Zollverein area from 2026. The coal mine Zollverein was then working for already about 80 years and took quite some large space in this landscape, characterized by agriculture, residential buildings and tenant gardens. It is clearly visible that the industrial use of the landscape enormously harms its shape. We, th we see on the right the supposedly oldest slag heap in Essen, and over here on the left, this area, um, that the modeling of the landscape from overburden to form settling ponds for cold sludge already began. Today, this area in the center of the Zollverein Park uh, has become the home of the sculptures by Ulrich Rückring. During the 1950s, Schaft 12, um, established then in the south, together with the old Schaft, was in the peak of its production where it produced up to 12,000 tons of coal per day. The sweeping track hard from the south to the north between the two locations was established and connected Zollverein to the köln mindenau railway. Uh, the red line you see there, the first railway line in the Ruhr area established in 1847, in the very same year when Zollverein Schaft, 12 was, uh, Schaft 1 was established right by the railway. During the late 1950s until the 1970s, Zollverein doubled its size and grew fairly to the shape it has today by building the huge new coping plant directly connected to the coal mine. By that time, already parts of the landscape fell out of use and nature got a first chance to grow. In some parts actively planted, in other uh, to cover the wounds or as some kind of protection for the nearby residential areas, in other parts more by accident because areas were not used anymore and plants introduced by the wind and the birds and by train wagons found their desired conditions. So here we have a view of Zollverein uh, from 1989, when it was in a state of, well, what shall we do with all those rusting leftovers? The coal mine Zollverein was already closed for three years and the coking plant was still working until 1993. We see the clearings of the coal mine and the coking plant inside a growing belt of forest. 
but how can this be a park? In 1989, the Iba Emscher Park started and took considerable influence on the future of the Ruhr area in total and Zollverein in particular. The task of this international building exhibition, Iba Emscher Park, was to set new impulses for the economic change of the industrial region in the northern Ruhr area, which is the Emscher region, with new ideas and projects in the urban, social, cultural and ecological sectors. One big question was demolition or preservation? And in many places in the area the answer was demolition. For Zollverein that was the first answer as well, but mainly driven by the people of the IBA that noticed there were already some new users overtaking the old facilities other ideas grew as well. And as the first intruders into this, this uh, closed and fenced area were, were artists like Thomas Rother or Ulrich Rückrim and others, a group of people managed to persuade Ulrich Rückrim to place a large sculpture into the area of the former coal sludge settling ponds. And this sculpture named Castell became part of the Documenta 9 in 1992, and it changed people's view on the site. <clears throat> Suddenly this wasteland was a place of art and a place for guests and visitors. Most of them had never before heard of Zollverein, but they came to see the art by Rückri. In the following years, our office uh, was working together with Ulrich Brückling to open this landscape more for another four sculptures he placed there and for even more visitors. Among other interventions and decisions, this led to the concept conservation by conversion. The Bauhütte Zollverein was established and the name Bauhütte, of course, was not chosen by accident. In Germany we have the word Dombauhütte for the workshop that cares about building and maintaining a th cathedral over centuries. The Bauhütte Zollverein was established to find ways to renovate first buildings, to find new uses for them, as we see one example in this picture. The architects Heinrich Böll and Hans Krabe with their office in Essen found innovative ways to restore the buildings for not a very big amount of money. Um, these buildings that originally were never meant to last longer than 50 years. In 2001, the complex of Zolfer and coal mine and coking plant became World Heritage. And in 2002, Reinhard Roseneck made his master plan about dealing with the monument and testified which buildings and machines and bridges and pipes or which parts of all that had to be kept, should be kept or could be removed from a monument preservation point of view. In the same year, Rem Kohlhaas' office uh, for Metropolitan Architecture presented the master plan Zollverein, which under the headline Walled City gave ideas and rules for the urban development of Zollverein and which was developed in close cooperation with uh, Reinhard Rosenick. And because this master plan did not say much about the outside space of Zollverein and people felt that they should be paid more attention on that issue, one year later another master plan about the so-called industrial nature was added by the office Agence Terre from Henri Bava. And that finally takes us to Zollverein Park. <coughs> By the time of 2004-2005, with already three master plans on the table and public funds inside for restoring buildings and bringing new users to Zollverein, an international competition was held to implement Zollverein Park on the basis of the existing master plans. Interdisciplinary teams had to be formed from landscape architects, artists, designers and lighting planners to make a design for a park containing new sculptural art, an orientation system, and a lighting concept. We formed a team together with the artist's observatorium from Rotterdam, first design from Cologne, and Lichtkunstlicht from Bonn. 
The core of our winning design for the Zollverein Park was to take use of the long implementation and realization time. Due to our then 20 years of experience with Zollverein and the Ruhr area, we knew that this park would not be built in two or five years. In fact, the park would rather be developed and evolve slowly over a period of 10 or even 20 more years. Actually, I'm working on this project now for 15 years and we are not finished. So. <laughs> Therefore, a clear and robust concept is needed that can react flexible, flexibly to any changing basic conditions. In addition to the principle of conservation by conversion, which is mainly related to the buildings and facilities, we established development by maintenance for the open space. The maintenance and care of the park becomes the most important tool for implementing the park. In the text about our concept, Harald Fritz from our office wrote, the Zollverein Park, which in the beginning on its own, has developed on industrial terrain and does not deny its industrial origin, is given its uniqueness by the high contrast playing between the clear, simple shapes and structures of the industrial architecture and the variety of spontaneous vegetation. The shape and the appearance of the park are developed through a systematic and continuous maintenance program. Asked for an abstract about the landscape design, we would say Zollverein Park is not about establishing a museum-like industrial landscape, but the concept composes a landscape from the existing elements, incorporating the historical and current developments and science in a conscious and credible manner, and offering a complex surface for a pragmatic future development and usage of space ready to be used by visitors. But what might be decisive for the jury to award our concept was the fact that we managed to merge the four disciplines in our team to one integral concept. To give an example for that, the Art by Observatorium consists of new welcoming pavilions placed at the entrances of the park, built as homes for the new gatekeepers of Zollverein welcoming visitors and being the most important part of the orientation system. As well as the ring promenade, which by its recognizable design with simple horizontal signs on the pavement and illuminated as a red glowing line around the site is partly landscape design, element of orientation and lighting design. Our approach to Zollverein is based on a few principles. Emphasis on the architectural ensemble. <coughs> Restraint in landscape architecture. Reduction of elements and materials. Respect for the existing. Conservation of the industrial origin. Use of the space by visitors. Visualization and experience of the transformation. And, like I already said, development by maintenance. To illustrate those ideas, I want to show you the main elements of the park. At first, we have the track boulevard. The different areas of Zollverein are connected by a broad, harp-shaped harp track system on which coal and rock were loaded and wagons were ranked. At operating times, these tracks, this track system was the infrastructural backbone of the site. Via the tracks, most of the materials and goods were transported and fed into the regional railway network. Today, instead of trains, there are people who work or relax here crossing the park on their way or visiting the museums and the monument path. The rail tracks are obviously part of the monument and should serve as the backbone of the system today as well. The structures, as it was already described in the master plan by Agence Terre, are transferred, are transferred to a boulevard whose rhythmic patterns allow visitors to use, experience and take possession of the park. 
Our design of the track boulevard is simple and robust. The main elements are the tracks, transformed to paths, and the emerging industrial nature in between, expanded only by some robust furniture. The density of the trees and the maintenance are different in different parts of the track boulevard, which creates different spaces according to the utilization around. <clears throat> Another element is the ring promenade. This completely new element was as well established in the master plan by Agence Terre. In the competition we had to give it a specific design and find the right route for it. A 10 meter wide profile, an eye-catching color scheme, the rusting steel band glowing in the darkness in the middle of the ring promenade, and a small step on the inside of the ring make both the connecting and the separating functions of the ring promenade visible and tangible. The ring promenade generally is the easiest and easiest to find path between two points on the side and generates a diverse experience of the varied spaces on the site. It is both a four kilometer long path guiding visitors and providing a variety of sensory impressions as well as it is its own space as such, a space for all park visitors, for tourists from far away as well as for the residents of the neighborhood and for the numerous employees on the site. And one more element, uh, the new pavilions. The orientation system starts with welcoming gatekeepers who provide the visitors with information and orientation upon arrival. Five new pavilions and the old gatekeeper's house at the Courtyard of Honor <coughs> serve for orientation, guidance, information, for support and for lingering. The arrival at Solferein is somehow familiar and therefore contrasting to the large-scale machine Solferein. As André Decker from Observatorium, who is sitting here, uh, says, a pavilion breaks down the industrial dimensions to a place for the individual. The gatekeeper shares the inside and outside pavilion with the visitor. Welcome to Zofferheim. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. I do have a question of your actual work, because you, you say you're still working about it. So, yeah. as a landscape architect, so and something that already have been made, what is your work about it right now? Yeah, as I said, uh, Zofferheim as a whole is, sorry, is in constant transformation. Then, as, uh, not all the buildings are refurbished yet, and not all areas are uh, are overtaken now by new uses. Also, the landscape has to be uh, has to be uh, worked on. Um, on the other hand, we had projects there now 25 years ago. So today, uh, for example, one parking space there uh, has to be made new again. <laughs> so the work continues. Are there other kind of these projects elsewhere in the in the rural area? Uh, of course, a lot, but not of this size and of this uh, aura. <laughs> uh, not all of them are as visible and well known in the world or in Europe. Um, but there are a lot of other uh, projects of this kind, smaller ones. Um, uh, our office is working on such projects for more than 40 years now, when, okay. when, the, uh, when this transformation from the industrial landscape to something else began. So, okay. yeah. We took 15 years now to, to make the park and are still continuing. The book is quite <laughs> thick. Um, unfortunately, it's in German, but there are a lot of pictures and <laughs> those are international. <laughs> Show it to Thank me. You very Show much. it to me. Thank you very much. Cover. Yes, it's cover. a very beautiful book. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Sebastian Yu uh, from the ADEM, the French Environment and Energy Agency. 
Um, so you showed uh, how you design the place so that people can reappropriate the uh, coal industry and the uh, history in the rural area. Just one small question. Did you think about uh, building solar panels, for example, in, in the place to create kind of a continuity between uh, this old industry and the energy transition? W was, have you thought about it uh, during, uh, when you designed the project? Uh, not we, as designers of the park, that wasn't a topic for us because uh, we thought about it shortly when uh, designing the illumination, the lighting uh, for the park, if it's possible to to get solar energy for that, um, which was too expensive by that time. Um, but there is an there is an example on the on the coking plant on the side, which is a battery of 600 meters of ovens, and there on top was uh, built uh, solar panels during the Iba Emsha Park, and they are still running and providing energy. But that's uh, not what we did. Et ce très beau projet euh, inscrit dans la longue durée effectivement de la transformation d'un site qui fait largement écho euh, à, la à la présentation de Alain Beltran tout à l'heure à propos du patrimoine et de la capacité et des interrogations qu'on a autour de cette, euh, de cette notion de patrimonialisation.